And welcome to this uh, special Conquer TV program uh, that we're recording remotely with art teachers from the Concord School District. So happy to be joined uh, by Karen McCormick from Broken Ground School, Jessica Chambers from Millbrook School. We have Mel Melissa Legacy from Beaver Meadow and Nate Charterhouse from Abbott Downing. Thank you guys for uh, taking time out of your remote learning and, and everything you guys have going on to be here and talking with us today. And it is actually Youth Art Month, I believe, up through April 15th. So happy Youth Art Month to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So to start off, Karen, um, I kind of mentioned the uh, the remote learning setup that's going on right now uh, and that everyone's sort of relearning how education works and kind of figuring it out on the fly. So as it relates to the art show um, and even just the art program, how are you guys adjusting to that, to those changes? So I think one thing that has been really awesome was that you reached out to me and thought like how could we bring the art show to people in their homes now that they can't go out and enjoy it as much so having this opportunity with formats like this to come together to still talk with one another and also to connect virtually when we when we can't connect with each other face to face um, i think it's a, a great opportunity for us to try new things and get creative um, us art teachers were used to thinking outside the box anyway. So I feel like that has been one of the more positive things for me in this whole um, remote teaching, learning, and even remote art show is like that challenge of trying something new and creative. Yeah. I mean, that's, I guess that's right up your alley, right? Is thinking creatively, thinking outside the box, right? So, um, in terms of the actual art show setup that happens over at Steeplegate Mall, Nate, could you tell us a little bit sort of, um, it's a pretty elaborate setup, and the video we made last year, I don't think we talked about that so much. Um, so the actual art show, like how much time goes into it, and the thought that and of that process that goes into it. Um, the process starts um, before the art show even happens, and we you know get plans done. Um, we go and look at the space. Um, we figure out with maintenance that our school district how to get the panels over there. Um, a lot of collaboration with the mall and the mall security um, to figure out timing and, and what room we're using. Um, we put up a lot of uh, walls. In some past years, we've used a lot of cubes um, made out of plywood that uh, support sculptures. Um, so there's a lot of construction of that going on at the beginning. and. Uh, a couple of us go ahead of time um, in the past and really uh, do all the pre-work, the wall building, setting up the cubes. This year we uh, didn't have to do as many cubes, but we did have uh, new walls and uh, that was provided by a grant that I wrote for the Concord Trust and the Concord Trust uh, approved it and awarded uh, our school district some new display walls. So that was uh, a nice addition this year. So we have, um, Lots of nice wall space now to, to put up. Great. Now, you mentioned the uh, the Concord Trust, which I think Concord TV, we've recorded the Concord Trust Awards before. I mean, huge resource for faculty members in the Concord School District. And we've been over there before um, for the, the ceremony they've done, which I think they did at maybe Beaver Meadow. I can't, I might be misremembering that. But, um, and then I've seen faculty actually with displays sort of uh, of what their Concord Trust project was and how they yeah. use the grant money, that sort of thing. So I don't think it can be said enough how amazing it is to have Concord Trust uh, providing these opportunities across the entire school district, like in the case that you just mentioned. So, the, And the Concord Trust, the, the grant process is uh, really easy to do. And um, this is the second uh, grant that I received from them, the one for Abbott Downing School for doing some other projects, but this one for the arts was a, Pretty nice and so this is something we can use for many many years <laughs> that's great Good. all right well melissa on uh on that note i know you just you have a distraction off to the side but we're going to turn the attention over to you now because um if i understand correctly this was your first time um in the concord school district being part of the art show is that right yeah so this is my first time doing the art show and um really working together with um, other art teachers in the district. Yeah. 
try to do it whatever in the way. This is my life now. <laughs> no, totally. Totally. I know. You're very silly. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to sit here, then you have to be nice and quiet, okay? Can you be nice and quiet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is my first year doing it, and it was really nice to work with the other art teachers in the district. I've done art shows before um, within schools I worked in and also the community, but never with other art teachers. So it was really nice to collaborate with them and also see everyone else's artwork as well and really working together. I think the day that we set up was really nice. We helped one another and, um, you know, I got to go know them a lot better too, which was really nice. And to put this all together for the community in a big way, uh, it's just when you walk into the space, it's really kind of takes you over and um, it's very inspiring to see all the different artwork. <laughs> yeah. Right. It really is. Yeah. It's impressive to see what the kids can put together. So let's uh, pivot over towards. Um, so, Jessica, you had mentioned before we started recording about how fortunate you guys are to be able to partner with the Steeplegate Mall and to have the space you have and to have what you had said at the new space. Um, so, tell us about that and kind of what about the setup and, and just what Steeplegate Mall provides. Uh, definitely. Our partnership with the Steeple Gate Mall has gone back even before my time in the district. And it's it's just a really nice thing to have. They're always so great about working with us. They love having us. We love working with them, especially as Nate had talked about setup day. Um, just even communicating with them, oh, we need this door open. And they're always so excited. They love to come and see how we transform the spaces that they have for us. And it's just, it's it's always a great space. It's, you know, it's hard to find space to put up as much artwork as we have. And as Melissa talked about, there's so many of us and we come together from elementary to the high school. I mean, there's thousands of pieces of artwork that we put up in this one show. And it's hard to find that nice space. And the mall really has worked with us to provide spaces where we can go in, we can put stuff on walls and then as Nate talked about we can put panels in and especially this year we have so much space the old dress barn space um, has such great lighting in it this year a lot of families talked about how they felt like they could really walk around and really like see everything and still mingle Um, we were able to do a couple group installations which were really nice where um, art teachers like Melissa and Nate brought collaborative pieces from their school. We put them in the display windows, which is something we haven't done in the past. And it's been a really nice addition to see how art is not just about that solo effort of creating one thing and it's yours, but it can be a group effort where you kind of come together. And that's kind of the theme really of our art show is that collaboration. A lot of times art teachers are off doing their own thing, but as a district, we work hard to come together as an art department to interact with the community and show them how amazing our students are and how hard they really work. Wow, really well put. Thank you. Yeah, um, I guess so. That was sort of all I wanted to cover, sort of in our conversation, at least part one of this conversation. We have students coming up in part two, um, but I just wanted to just sort of ask and open this up to anyone. Um, your overall thoughts on the student artwork this year. I'm sure every year there are pieces that are just amazing and you may not want to just single out specific people, specific kids, but I mean, just as a whole, what were your impressions of of the collaborative overall work of what students put in this year and pretty much open to anyone on that? I have um, a little thought there, a story kind of. So, um, and when Jessica was talking about the different spaces, I was reminded, so Broken Ground School did the flowers that go around the entryway of the space, but the story behind that project is a little bit different. I had a student, a fifth grader come in and she was showing me how to make these flowers. Her aunt and uncle are professional party planners and they create these paper sculpted flowers for all kinds of different events and things. So she was excited. She came in to show me how she made these. And I said to her, oh, 
this is really cool. Would you like to teach your class how to do this next art class? You know, why don't you come in and teach? And so it, she took me by surprise when she came in for her next art class, she literally had made stencils for people to trace. She had all the little circles traced for people to cut out. She had her whole spiel on how to make it. So I let her literally take over my art class give the spiel about how to make these flowers to her fifth grade class and they all started making them and then i invited her to come into my other four fifth grade classes and do the same wow. thing. so all these paper flowers just sort of like evolved we were going to do something in our school and then i just threw them all in a bag brought them to the art show and we decided to put them around the entrance you know just together collaborating with other art teachers taking these pieces and so when she came to the show the opening night and saw that the flowers were all around it so yeah. excited. Parents took pictures of it, sent it to the aunt and uncle, like across the country. And it just ended up bringing people together, which is, those are my favorite stories about art. That's so cool. What I like about that too, is that you were willing to embrace her passion and to say, oh, why don't you show everybody else? Like, I don't know. I, I, I hear about that a lot, in, particularly in the Concord School District. That's not like, I'm the teacher and I know everything and you're the student and you know nothing. It's like, well, if you have something that you're passionate about and that you learned about, show us, let's learn about it. Um, so I think that's really cool. Uh, and uh, anybody else have any little anecdotes or uh, examples kind of, of, of student work in this year's show? I'd like to just uh, maybe mention, like I enjoy just seeing uh, former students um, and seeing them continuing their education up to the middle school and high school. We're mm -hmm. seeing them at a young age. Uh, being elementary art teachers, um, seeing students continuing to be creative and their skills just developing more is pretty amazing uh, to see um, after many years of teaching them. The other thing is just also having elementary art put up next to uh, the middle school or high school is a nice contrast to see the different styles and just yep. makes you really want to walk around and just get everybody's art, uh, view everybody's art and stuff. It's really nice to have the mix. Some parents they're like, "Where is my artwork? My students' work?" But it's uh, I think it's a great way to get people to walk around and just observe everything there. That's a great point. Uh, anyone else have any other thoughts there? This has been a really, really great conversation so far. So, um, I would say my favorite piece is my collaborative piece as well because it's the first project I did with my students in Concord. So it was a kind of get to know you project, and they made. Um, dots inspired by the dot book um, by, gosh, I can't think of it. Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds, yeah. And um, it, it was a basic project of using colors, shapes, designs, and um, you put them all together and you can see different styles that kids are using and inspiration. And when I look at it, it just reminds me of my first lesson I've taught with all these kids and how much I've grown and learned from them um, only in the short months I've started at um, Beaver Meadow School. Wow, that's great. Yeah, definitely. I think this is a great opportunity to showcase how much students have grown. You know, we work so hard with them day in and day out. And then to finally, there's something nice just about taking that piece of artwork you've worked so hard on and, and putting it in display. That's, I think, part of the magic of, of art in general is working on it, but then displaying it. And the kids, there's something just so great about the way they, they light up and open up when they see their artwork being displayed in that way. A lot of students think, oh, well, I'm not really a real artist, even though we work so hard as our teachers. Be like, but no, you are, you are an artist. And when they see their artwork up this way in a place like Steeplegate Mall, it really gives them that feeling of like, completion of like, wow, I've made something and it's really great. Gives them that like self-confidence and, and we love it. We love coming together to see it and collaborate. That's great. It's all about the collaboration. That's it. It really is. Yeah. Circling back to that. It's all about collaboration. Really. Absolutely. Well, unless anyone has any other thoughts, I think this was a really good start to our conversation. We'll hear from um, some, some of the student artists themselves, but um, again, I'd like to thank, uh, the various art faculty from Concord School District for joining me from your remote learning. And uh, uh, we're all kind of relearning how we do our jobs. Certainly it's impacting Concord TV, but I think for all of us, we're relearning how to do our jobs. But it's great that the, uh, the art show was able to go up at Steeplegate and that um, certainly we'll look forward to when it happens next year as well, that we'll be back to a sense of normalcy, I hope as well. That's the hope, right? 
I think by the time we talk next year, I think we'll be back to normal, right? <laughs> <No plan. laughs> um, but just keep up the great work, you guys. Everything I see in here in Concord School District is uh, how faculty just adapted so quickly and that it's all about the kids and you guys are doing a great job. So thank you. And we are back, part two of our discussion about the Concord School District art show. And we have a couple of returning faculty to help facilitate some of the conversation. We have Karen and we have Jess, thanks for coming back. And let's have our students, uh, we, we're joined by three expert student artists, right? Uh, so why don't we have you guys uh, introduce yourselves one at a time. Uh, and I don't know how we're gonna decide who goes first, but... Uh, I don't know what order we're going in, but I'd love to just have you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves. Um, hi, my name is Katie May. I am eight, almost nine, and I am in third grade. Um, hi, my name is Sadie. I am in third grade. I'm William Johnson, and I'm in fourth grade. Um, in my class, a lot of times I'll give a theme for a project, or we might study a famous artist or a movement in art. Um, certain art genre, whatever the learning objective is for that piece. So say we're looking at landscapes and we look at the Vincent van Gogh landscape and we learn some different things about how artists use space, like foreground, background, and middle ground to give the illusion of depth. Um, but then when we, I tend to have the kind of um, path where as we move forward in the project, I try to let kids take as much um, artistic license as they want to and be as creative as possible. Um, some projects, kids tend to stick to like my ideas more, but I'm always open to them in their own direction. That's what I hope mm -hmm. will happen is more um, unique thinking, creative thinking, problem solving happening. Yep. So maybe we could just go one by one and let's hear about the artwork that each of our three uh, esteemed guests worked on. And so uh, maybe we can start going in order. We can start with Sadie and you can tell us about uh, what you put together for the art show. Um, I put together a dot painted turtle and the, and yeah, the assignment was to the drop painting of something like an animal or a design, and I chose to make a turtle. You made a turtle. Okay, so keep in mind, I don't come from um, like an art background. So could you explain to me what dot art is? Is that what you say? It was, it was dot art. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, it's so it's like you take a little toothpick and yep. you make the outline of a turtle or something and um then you can like make other things like around it or in it wow that's cool did it take you a long time to make it um kind of it probably took me like two art classes but yeah oh, wow okay great and i guess maybe next uh Katie May, you can tell us about uh, what you put together. Um, my assignment was to make um, a totem pole. And for my animal, I chose a panda because I really like them. And I thought of, since there were um, art books about real animals, and I found pandas. So I got a real close-up informational picture of them. So I kind of, um, I didn't copy it, but I just took them and did different designs on my panda. And I, it took, took about two art classes. Okay. So you brought up something really interesting there. So you used something as inspiration. So you didn't copy it, but used it as inspiration. Now to go a little off script though, Jess, I'm wondering, is that something that you guys, that you're teaching students to use other things as inspiration that they okay. can find other work to kind of, 
use it to spark ideas, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And um, Karen and I are in a very um, amazing position where we get to share third grade students like Sadie and Katie. Um, and so Karen and I structure our classes um, so that they're very different. So specifically for me with third grade, we do an art around the world unit. So mm -hmm. students get to examine art from each continent. This ties directly into their grade curriculum. They do a huge continent in third grade. So we, you know, in my class, we tie that. And so like with the Native American totem poles, a lot of students were like, oh, I really want to do an animal. And we used animals as our inspiration. And in my classroom, I have a ton of animal books for students to look at because a lot of times, even when I'm drawing, I have to look at something. I, it's hard to do it from memory. It's nice to have mm -hmm. something in front of you to give you that kind of jumping off point, especially if you get stuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, Katie, may back to you. So, for your panda, how long um, how long did it take you to create it? Like, how many classes did it take? Two, really. Two classes. All right. So, yeah. it seems like two classes is sort of the, the happy medium here for project. All right. And last, we have Will. So, Will, tell us a little bit about what your art project was. Uh, my project was to build a polar bear in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. So, I thought of top of my head a polar bear in a tuxedo polar bear in a tuxedo that's cool and what um like what uh was it a painting or what, what kind of uh um it was sort of yeah it was a painting okay Wait. very cool that's great how do you come up with a tuxedo idea did you just think of it yeah yeah and then how many classes did it take to uh, to work on this uh the polar bear um, it only took one class to do the Sharpie, but originally, I think two. Oh, okay. So, I guess, uh, to pivot back to the art show, um, did all three of you go to the, uh, the art show? I'm assuming you all went, right? Yeah. You I didn't have with... time to. Oh, you didn't have a chance to? Yeah. Well, it's good we're talking about it now, then. This is kind of a virtual art show, then, I guess. Um... But for those of you who did go to the art show, um, what was it like seeing your artwork and all of your friends' artwork up on the walls and part of this show? It was, was cool. That? Yeah. It was cool? Yeah. <laughs> were you, like, nervous that other people were going to see this uh, this polar bear artwork, or you didn't really care? No. Nice. Nice. Uh, and what about you, Sadie? You said you went, right? Yes. Um, I thought it was, um, like, kind of cool to see everybody's different ideas and creative designs. That's great. So, Karen and Jess, um, is there any other th thoughts you guys have or questions for our student artists that I might be missing here about maybe the process or something else uh, that you can think of? Um, so... Just a question for you kids, and we'll see who chimes in here. Um, <clears throat> when you go to the art show, tell me about a little bit about what it's like to see other kids' artwork from other schools or kids' artwork from other grades. Were there any particular pieces you saw that interested you or amazed you in some way? Can you talk a little bit about that, Sadie? Um, well, there was... Um... I really like seeing other people's because I like seeing what the other teacher, um, what the other teachers came up with for art projects. And my favorite was probably um, like the eighth grade ones because they were very like cool and yeah. Uh, how about you, Will? What did what was um something that you saw that was particularly interesting to you, or maybe younger kids versus older kids artwork? Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, I I prefer the seventh graders' artwork. And what what kind of artwork did you like that you saw from them? Picasso's. <laughs> Am I putting you on the spot a little well? Sorry. So the seventh graders, there's there's the best. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're big fans of the middle school art program. 
kudos mm -hmm. to the teachers. Yeah. Um, it is fun to see sort of as we see the older kids that were our former students and a lot of these kiddos, they get to see artwork of siblings or um, students that they've known that have gone on to run lit and to the high school. So that's pretty cool. Um, Katie May, did, did your sister have anything in the show? Yeah, she did, but I didn't hear what she had in it. <laughs> we'll have to ask her afterwards, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, Josh, what? Uh, I'm trying to think of what else would be really good for you to hear. Um, how about... Um, oh, I got a good question. Okay, go for it. Um, so, and any of you, any of you guys are welcome to answer this question. I guess you could maybe talk about what's one of your favorite parts about creating art. Um, Anybody want to talk? Who say do you go? Um, my favorite part is about creating art is probably like showing people what you like, how you are, um, being creative, and showing your emotions, and mm -hmm. just. You like expressing yourself through art? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Katie or Will, do either of you want to talk about what if your are Sure. Favorite? Um, I like expressing art because I can show my emotions and feelings and what I'm feeling like and what I feel like to draw right then and there. And I like to do it because then I can show my friends and my family what I did. Mm. And it's fun. Yeah, just fun. I love it. I'm, it's fun for me, too. Will, did you have anything you wanted to add? It's okay. Um, um, I like how long it takes to do the art. Yeah, you like a good long project. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear from you kids. Like, Was there a favorite art project you've done this year in particular or a favorite medium that you like to work in and why? Um, I probably, my favorite was probably um the starry snowy night because um i got to like show like what my world would be like and different places i like to go to and i liked mixing colors to make different types of things so the starry snowy night josh just to fill you in a little bit was um a cityscape so that um, kids needed to learn about landscapes and the particular genre of a landscape of a cityscape. And they had to come up with their own cities. And we just kept it a winter theme since we were right in the middle of winter doing it. But also looked at Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night and oh. kind of mimicked some of the world things that he did in the sky and came up with our own cityscapes. Nice. That's great. And it's, it's you have the artistic side of it, but also, like Sadie was saying, uh, thinking about where they want to go and thinking about their life and thinking about decisions they could make someday. So it's cool. Cool to integrate those different thoughts. Will or Katie May, did you have a favorite project so far this year and why? Yeah. Um, I liked where we made all different kinds of shapes and we got to color our own colors in them because I liked making the shapes and coloring all the different colors that we could color in to all those shapes. Was that our project we did? Uh, yeah. African artist. Yeah. We looked at an African artist um, from South Africa who she uh, creates huge wall paintings with different shapes and designs. She's actually been featured on BMW's Art Cars in 1991 and 2016. So huh. Esther Mongolo, she's a pretty cool artist. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot about getting to do your own color. Right. Well, do you have a project you want to talk um, about? The cat uh, out of the paper mache. Oh, you mean the collage cat? Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about how we made those, like the cut paper art. Um, you would first have to bit, um, have a color sheet of paper, construction paper, and then you have to cut it out to, sh to make a shape of the cat. And then you can add extra construction paper onto it to, to make um, a specialized cat. 
So that when you if you go over to the mall, if you end up going there to get any footage, yeah, um, you can look for the Broken Ground School Alley Cats. We called them. Ooh. Um, it was sort of a quick fill-in project. I saw these cozy fall cats, and it was a cute little cat with a scarf on holding a pumpkin. But of course, like I said, I don't like to do cookie cutter projects, and so I put it up to the kids that they could really kind of go crazy with their cat that some people made blue cats, some people made pink cats and the cat could be holding anything. And so kids were coming up with cats that are holding their own Nintendo switch or cats holding basketballs or cats holding magazines that said like national catagraphic on them. Um, I, I think I had one of them was holding like the dummies guide to catching mice or something like that. So <laughs> kids got really, really, out of the box creative on this one and good good it had such a personality it was such a fun project and i all i would get is like i it was supposed to be this quickie little thing we hung it up in the hallway on a brick wall and teachers would go by and the, the comment i kept hearing is like oh my gosh those cats are so stinking cute so everyone ended up loving this cat project it was sort of yeah the big cat project well it, this makes me want to take an art class too now uh because it seems like uh Everybody has a lot of fun with this, so. So if you guys had to give Josh um, a, like a piece of advice or a, a, like if he wants to take mm. an art class now as an elementary school student, why would you recommend taking an art class to somebody? Um, I recommend taking an art class because you can create whatever you want and um, you don't, and you some, and sometimes when you're just free to draw anything, you can really create anything you'd want to make, and you can paint and make um, different things like that. Nice. Yeah, that's a good reason. Anyone else want to add anything there? Why would you take an art class was the question. Or why should Josh take an art class? Me specifically. <laughs> Um, I think class because you get to make new friends, and you can, like Sadie said, you can design your thing, your own thing, and you can do whatever you want if it's like a time where you don't have anything specific that the teacher told you to do. Uh, okay. I suggest to take an art class because you can make your art look more realistic. I'd like to thank Sadie and Katie May and Will for joining us. And you're all Broken Ground School students, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, guys, you guys clearly have some great teachers and keep up the great work. And I hope the remote learning keeps working out for you guys. And thank you, Karen and Jess, for also being here to share your insight. And uh, for part three, we're going to be talking to a couple more students. So we'll be back with that.
And welcome back. We're in part three of our discussion with Concord School District Art and the Art Show. And we know it's Youth Art Month up until April 15th. And as part of that discussion, we're talking with students and we're talking with faculty. So Karen McCormick, thanks again for joining us. You've been here for every segment. So <laughs> back. and then we have uh, two students uh, who had artwork in the art show. So why don't we have both of you introduce yourselves and we can start with Bella. Okay, um, I'm Bella and I'm in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, in the art show, I made um, an ugly doll. Um, so we took fabric and uh, needles and that kind of stuff and stitched it together um, and then added our own little details for that. Very nice. Very nice. So we'll get back to what an ugly doll is because I, I want to know more about that process. Um, but Molly, why don't you tell us about yourself and your and what you worked on? Um, my name is Molly, sixth grade, and I had two pieces in the art show. I had an alley cat and I had my leaves, which we worked a lot on and I was we used watercolors and sharpies and added details to our leaves. Nice. nice. So we have a good variety of projects here. So Bella, just to get back to what you were talking about, you were talking about an ugly what is it, an ugly doll? Yeah. And you said that you stitch it. So what give us a little more detail about like the step by step process that goes into making that um so we had to first choose our design that we wanted to um make for the ugly doll which is like a stuffed doll mm -hmm. and um then after that we took our fabric colors and um that we wanted and we cut them out in our shapes. And um, after that, with certain stitches, um, we used, we uh, stitched the fabric together and put the stuffing in. And then we had our ugly doll after we did all the little details. Wow, sounds like quite the process. Uh, how long did it take you to make yours? Um, because I have it, every other our art every other day it probably took me um i'd say like 10 art classes or something like that okay. wow so it that was like a really long-term project was it, it does it take a lot of patience to get to the finished doll yeah it does oh, well very cool bella um so molly you worked on two projects you said an alley cat and then you worked on like a leaves project, something like that. Could you go into a little more detail about both of those and how much time it went into it and what the process was like for both those projects? Yeah, so for our leaves, we actually outside and collected leaves and we brought them back into the art room. And then we started um, either by tracing it or looking at it and making the, the outline of the leaves and we added um a lot of details to our leaves um just looking at the leaves that we found from outside and then we did a watercolor background as if the leaves were like flowing wow very cool so that was the leaves project so that what what is an alley cat or what what was that about um we made bgs alley cats and we hung them in the hallway so we made um a lot of people made a cat and you got to design it with whatever you wanted. They could hold whatever, so we made it holding a bowl of milk. Wow, very nice. So Karen, am I missing, uh, there were some good questions you asked us in part one um, with our students. Um, I'm trying to remember what those were. You had some really good questions, so. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask Molly, um, just knowing some of the projects that she did, Mm -hmm. With the fall leaves project, one of the goals for me as your teacher in that was to get you guys to really look carefully at something and do observational drawing. Can you, and talking about the details, can you talk a little bit about, did 
do you think that project stopped you and slowed you down to really look when you're drawing? What kind mm -hmm. of skills do you think you developed? Yeah, it made me really look closely at the things that I was drawing and the leaves. And I really noticed a lot of the details about the leaves that I was looking at. Um, and it, it, it was a lot of fun. And then how, how did you then, like after looking and drawing, so that part was in pencil, and then you went on to using color and you said watercolor paints. Um, how did you use the paints? What kind of colors did you do and why? I used um, cool colors. Um, I used a lot of blue and green and it, it just reminded me of how um, fall is just getting cooler and how just out it's the leaves and the coolness of fall. So you just used your color to like express the mood and the feeling and the weather. I love that. It makes me very proud as an art teacher when I hear you guys talk about things like that. Um, one of the things that we talked about last time, we um, Mrs. Chambers asked the kids, like, tell us a little bit about something that you like. What, did, what was your question, Josh? Something about a medium that you really like in art or a material you like to work with and why? Like, yeah. Yeah, I think that, that I think that's pretty much what the question was. What type of medium do you like working with the most or type of project that you like working on the most? And explain why a little bit. Just as an artist, like do you think of yourself as an artist? Um sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I like the art that I'm doing, I think of myself as an artist. Like as in think it's good enough or like as in enjoy doing it? Um, oh, both. <laughs> How about you, Molly? Do you think of yourself as an artist? Yeah, I think um, when I have a lot of fun with it and I just enjoy art because it's very calming and I just really like it. So I do think of myself as an artist a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Good. And so both of you just think for a minute on a favorite material to work with, whether it be like paint, drawing, marker, clay, Sharpies, whatever, something you really like to create with and maybe what it is about that thing that you like. And who wants to go first? Bella? Sure. Um, I love uh, watercolor paints because you can, I love how you can, um, take colors and put it on the paper and they'll bleed everywhere um, which makes it look really cool and sometimes even like um even better than what you were expecting um i also love watercolor paints um because they don't they can come out in different shades like how dark you want it to be or light that sort of thing and you said you've been working on a watercolor, um, some watercolor projects now that we've been remote learning. Want to tell us about that? Yeah, I have. I have a whole stack of bookmarks, watercolor bookmarks that I've been working on. Wow, great. All right, and Molly, a favorite material and what it is about it that you like? I was going to say the same thing. I really like um, working with watercolors because I especially like doing warm color and cool colors um, because I like how they all blend together and I really like to experiment with them and all the different colors. Kind of funny because watercolors are one of my, my favorite medium too so uh, maybe, maybe I won't be exposing you guys to them a little extra. <laughs> You've been a good influence yeah. <laughs> all right um, what about um, now that we're doing all this remote learning, you're doing more learning at home. How have you been able to continue your learning in art specifically? Like what, what has that been like for you? Do you feel like you have more time for your art? Do you feel like the other studies are like getting in the way? What, what does that work out to? Um, I feel like it depends on um, like when I get my other work done. Um, on certain days, it um, my, academic work can 
get in the way of um, my art learning that I do and just making art. But other days when I have, like today, I finished all of my academic work already and um, I have more time to do art. So. Um, I, I think I have a lot of time to do both. Um, I think if I just get my work done, I think it's something to look forward to. And like, um, I've been doing art projects and just coloring and sketching that is just really nice and calm and it's a lot of fun. Now, um, have either one of you seen any of the drawing challenge that we've been doing online? I um, have drawing prompts on my class Google Classroom page and I've done, I think, all of them already. The but, or, middle school? Yeah. Nice. I've seen some of those posted on Instagram. I didn't know that they were yours. Awesome. One thing we didn't ask about was um, if both of you had a chance to go to the art show. And if you did, sort of what that was like to see your work posted at the art show. Um, so did you both go to the art show, have a chance to go in person? I didn't get a chance to go. We were going to go one day, but then we didn't. And then this remote learning thing happened. So yeah, yeah. we never got a chance to. Yeah. yeah, I did get a chance to go. And it made me feel very proud of my art. And just being able to look at everybody else's art. Um, just it, everybody else's art is so cool. And mine hanging on just made me proud. And I was it gave me ideas for other things to do and, mm. and like other art projects yeah. that I work on, especially in this time that I'm home. Good. Those are great points. And, and hopefully <coughs> by the time we get to next year's art show, uh, we'll be under normal circumstances again. But uh, still, you both have a lot to be proud of. Same with all of the students that we've talked to today. Also, kudos to you guys, students, families, faculty. Uh, we've all had to adjust. It's been quite the whirlwind of two weeks, hasn't it? Um, but Karen, just seeing how you and the rest of the faculty have adjusted to this in pretty much relearning how education can work, but it seems like everybody's adjusting to it. So kudos to you guys. I just have immense respect uh, for all of you for adjusting to this. And Concord TV's role is to just keep helping tell stories. Uh, just thank you, Josh, for um, being a way for everyone to be able to connect, that doing, getting to do meaningful stuff like this with my students and getting to share our art with the community is so important. I think mm -hmm. a lot of times we think about art as the creating piece, um, but in, even in our national arts core standards, part of that is creating, but part of it is presenting. Part of it is how do we share that? How do we present it to other people? And I think that you're making it so that kind of the show must go on <laughs> even, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though yeah. we can't go into the mall right now to see it. I'm really appreciative of that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you uh, to, to Bella, to Molly, all the other students, the other faculty to today. I've learned a lot. This has been a great perspective on uh, the whole arts department um, throughout the Concord school districts. So.